Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. As you can see, I have something new in front of me. I was approached by Paul Rubens Art to see if I wanted to swatch and talk about their newest watercolor set, the 52 watercolors by Miliang. And I be honest, I have never heard of Paul Rubens art before up until this point. So I had to do a little bit of research and see if other creators had um, worked with them before. And it turns out they have. <laughs> so, so that was good for me because I was able to see what other creators um, thought of these colors before me and uh, it turns out a lot of them are very impressed by the quality of the colors and obviously you know the price point is very competitive so I can't wait to open these up with you and give you a beginner's perspective of these watercolors so why don't we open it up right now and have a look inside and then we can start swatching and hopefully I'll have some time to paint something with it. So from what I heard is that the pan comes in different colors and yes the color indication here tells me that I got the lavender one and it's metal, comes with a clasp and this is what you see when you open it up first. So there's a, a sheet here that will tell you the light fastness and the transparency. And I will let other people that are more experienced than me talk about this stuff. <laughs> so let's see what else we have. This is a swatching card that you can use to, you know, swatch on right on top of here because it, it has all of the information already here. So that's helpful. And as others have pointed out, it's probably like a multimedia uh, paper. It's not watercolor paper, but that's okay. And then you get some watercolor paper here. And then here are all the colors. And then there's a, there's a sponge right here. There's a fine liner, a, a 0.5. It's a little bit bigger than what I like to use, but I think we should give it a try and see how it behaves on top of the watercolors. And then you get a pencil and a brush with it too. So I will be using the brush and the, um, the fine liner as well as those watercolors of course. So it's covered with this transparent lid that is stuck to the pans. All right, come on. Okay, so I think this is handy to have when you, you can put it back on when your colors are wet so that it doesn't go everywhere. And then you can take this out. You can use this as a um, mixing tray and I think this one comes out as well. I can't take it out right now. Just know that there's another tray down here that is flat that you can use for mixing if you want to. Obviously this is a great set um, to take with you when you're going somewhere and you don't want to bring everything. Obviously it has a lot of color range here but I have to say I'm a little surprised by the the size of the pans they're, they're tiny. They remind me of the um, Sakura watercolors that I have. I think they're slightly bigger than these, than the Sakura ones. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this swatch card here and then uh, swatch the colors out 
and then uh, hopefully that will give me enough time to maybe try out um, the watercolor paper that they give you in this set. So let me clear this off a little bit and get it ready um, to get messy and then I will be right back. All right, so I have the swatch page here and I am using their brush. There's a protective sleeve over the bristles when you first get it. And I have some fresh water here. I did not spray down the, the watercolors beforehand because I wanna see how easily they start up, I guess. This is very short, <laughs> this watercolor brush. So it's a little weird for me to hold, but I guess if it's a travel set, it makes sense. You don't wanna, you know, waste so much space, but you know, given the size of the, the whole pan, you could have fit a slightly bigger one in it. I like that it is acrylic because I always ruin the backside of the brush when it's wood and um, because I leave it in, in the water sometimes too long and then the wood starts to expand and then the um, paint will chip off. All right, so obviously the white you're not gonna be able to see and um, I'm just gonna zoom you in a little bit more here so you can see a little bit better. But just know that I have the pans right next to me. All right. Wow, this is exciting. <laughs> Can't see anything. All right. So this was white, and now we have the champagne yellow. I have to say, like right off the bat, they seem very creamy. And then we have pale orange. Let's give it a little bit more pigment here. And then apricot. Some of these are very opaque if you're not familiar with this kind of um, these kind of watercolors you have to just remember that those are mixed in with the um, with the regular colors like i said i whoa that is very bright i did not pre-wet the pan and I'm happy to say that you don't need a lot of water or pigment to get this much this much color on your on your brush like literally that's it and then this is the amount of pigment you get That's pretty impressive so this is new gamboge and then permanent yellow deep natural yellow and then we have orange and it it'll be uh, I'm curious to see what they're gonna how they're gonna react uh, when I a start adding a little bit more water to it because some of these look very similar in the pan and on this paper. Like these two, the permanent orange and the regular orange, they are they look identical to me. So it, it would be interesting to see how they react on the watercolor paper. This is the lemon yellow. It's very nice and bright. And now we're getting into the greens. Oh, that's pretty. That's a yellow green. And 
And don't worry, I will bring it up closer a little bit later on once I have all of them swatched. Ooh, this is very bright, lime green. I'll be curious to know the difference of the, um, I'm thinking about the Kuretake pans and how large they are, olive green, as opposed to these small ones here. If it makes, if it makes that much of a difference. What I like about the Kuritake ones is because there you have just a lot of more space to move your brush around. Whereas here, it happened with this pale orange here. I, I was a little bit too fast with my brush and I swooped some of that blue in, into the orange. And that just happens when you, when, when the the pans are so small and you're trying to go a little bit faster. So if you're like me, don't be like me. All right, what's this one? Permanent green. So grass green, permanent green. This one, uh, opacity is like high opacity. I think the stars are light fastness, if I'm not mistaken. And then this one is has no opacity. Viridian, Viridian, okay, Viridian. Oh, so nice. Um, lately, I have been into more of the earthy tones. So, I would have loved to see some more muted colors. But I'm thinking that if you mixed it in with maybe the yellow, like some of the lighter ones, you could potentially tone it down a little bit. Preferences change. So sometimes you're more into brighter colors than other times. So we had Viridian, Thala Green Blue, and then Hooker's Green Dark. Now we get to the cobalt tea. That's cobalt tea. Is it cobalt tea or cobalt teal? I don't know. It says tea on here. But they also spelled umber wrong. So who knows? That's pretty. And then what else do we have? Deep turquoise. <gasps> I'm a sucker for these colors. Ooh, yeah, baby. Love this one. And then we have Marin. You can't see this these colors, can you? Like in real life, this is a very pretty color. Sorry, the camera sometimes does not show you what I see. Oh, oh, if you're into your blues. Oh, and I have barely anything on this brush. Nice. Then you'd be very happy with these ones. Oh, this one is cornflower blue. It's more like a more like a purple, like a lavender. Why is it here? We don't know. Okay. What next? Sky blue. I have a lot of water on my brush. Let me take some off and give it a little bit more pigment. There, that's better, huh? Very nice, also very pretty. And then next is, oh yo yo, Ma manganese blue nova. It looks like a, a royal blue to me. Is that what it is? I don't know. Very bright and beautiful. And then we have cobalt blue. Oh, 
And the last one in this row is Ultramarine Blue. Also very nice. All right, we are halfway through. Are you still with me, people? All right, next up is Prussian Blue. Wow, that looks black in the pan. <gasps> yes, very pretty. Indigo. That looks more like a phthalo blue. What do I know? Then Payne's Gray. Very nice. A Carmine Rose. Now we're getting into the pinks and the reds. Again, this is a very opaque creamy. Also, um, you may have the previous, one of the previous sets of um, these colors. And from what I hear, I, 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 like I said, these colors are new to me. I've never heard of the brand before. Peach Blossom, is that it? Yeah, Peach Blossom. You might get doubles if you decide to try, give this one a try. So they have a 36 and a 48 set that came before this one. Wow, that's pretty. So that's rose red, peach blossom, rose pink, carmine rose. And now we have quinacridone rose. Again, those two look very similar. Do you need both of these? Probably not, but I don't know. And we'll see how they dry. In its wet state, they look very similar. Now this is lavender purple. And again, it looks fairly similar to the carmine rose up here, this guy. Next up is lilac. Didn't we already have a lilac? Maybe not. This one is a little bit more red and this one's a little bit more blue, which I guess would make sense. Next up is bright purple. Get ready, people. It looks burgundy in the pan. <gasps> Whoa, gorgeous. And again, I, very little. I have very little on my on my brush here. And then we have deep purple. Oh, so pretty. I'm just a sucker for purples and these blues or greens. So nice. The last one here is dioxazine purple. Whoa. You can almost not see that color. That looks black. And I didn't have a lot on my brush either. Hold on, hold on. Let me get an actual watercolor. Oh, okay. That looks black on here. That was a, that was not a lot of, not a lot of paint on that brush. And you cannot see that this is purple. All right, it is purple. Sorry, <laughs> I get excited. All right, last row, we have Organic Vermilion. If you've watched any of my other videos, I really enjoyed that Vermilion. Although the Kuretake Vermilion was a little bit more orange. This looks very like ruby red or cornflower red. Scarlet is this one here. That's almost a little blah, huh? Compared to the vermilion. Sorry, Scarlet, no offense. Permanent red. Uh, 
Whoa, lipstick red. And then Carmine. And then dark brown. Dark brown? That does not look like dark brown. Fired gold ochre. Okay. Very nice fall colors. And then this one is Indian red. Uh, I don't know if the camera picks this up, but you can see very clearly that this is a very um, opaque color. It's almost like it's almost like this one, but opaque. All right, next one is burnt brown. And then this one is the raw umber. It says raw umbe on it, by the way. But you know, we know what it means. There you go. Then the blacks, two blacks, and then we have a gold and a silver. This is ivory black. And then the coal black. Whoa. All right. Interesting. This one is says it's more opaque than this one. Hmm. All right. Are you guys ready? Here come the gold and the silver. It takes a little bit longer to activate. That's not bad, that's not bad. Nice. Okay, and then silver. These are a little bit harder to activate. And right now I'm not super impressed, but maybe we need to just let it dry. I think silver though in general is a little bit harder to get like an, a, a, um, a nice sheen. I've had this problem with um, when I was working on cookies and the silver never gave me good coverage, whereas the gold always, without any issues, gave me nice coverage. All right, we have here all the colors that come in this set, 52 total. Um, first impression, is wow very very bright let me zoom you out nice beautiful bright colors nice saturation at least on this paper there i feel like some of the colors you could get away with leaving out, like these two, for example. These two, to me, look exactly the same. And um, I'm not sure that I need, that I would need all of these purples. Give me all the blue greens, please, all the blue greens. But even here, like the cobalt tea, I think, I wanna say it's teal. Cobalt, cobalt teal um, and maybe yeah this one is in the in between I want to say the um, the viridian and the thalo thalo green blue 
but other than that these two are kind of the same the pale orange and the champagne yellow and then the, the red I would not be disappointed if, if I didn't have this one the scarlet that looks a little bit blah especially if you have the the, the vermilion here all right well now that we've swatched I'm gonna open up the paper and then um, I can try the paper with these colors and the brush. Um, so let me um, clean this up and then I will be back. All right, so now we can try out this paper. And uh, maybe create something. It looks like this paper is textured the same on both sides. So that's nice. And you get 10, uh, what are they? Three by, three by eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three by eight papers, strips. All right, so I think I wanna try out as many, as many colors as I can. So I will speed all of this up and then I will come back at the end and talk about it to see and tell you how I like the colors and what I felt about working with those colors. Sound good? Okay. So first of all I want to mention that this paper can take quite a bit of water. I really wish they uh, tell us what kind of paper this is because I think I would probably purchase that if it came, became available on its own. Secondly, the amount of water that I put on this paper is what I usually do and I am pleased to say that those colors stayed nice and vibrant even as it dried. So that is a huge plus for me for when I do want to work with vibrant colors. It did dry nice and fast, and that is another plus. I want to say it is cotton paper, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. Next up, I tested the pen, and I'm a little sad that I didn't test it on wet paper because I wanted to see if it would bleed. But as I mentioned, I did see other people use it on wet paper and I'm happy to say that it can actually take quite a bit of water without it bleeding. So that is also very nice. However, as I mentioned before as well, the nib is just a little bit too big for me. I like it if you have to work a little bit with a little bit thicker lines but I'm just so used to using the uh, maybe the size 03 or 01 or smaller pen size that um, I yeah I then switched to my thinner pen just to give it a little bit more variety so it's nice that it's available and I will probably use it again just because it's nice to have another pen on hand but as with the paper, I wish they had given us a little bit more information on the pens themselves. Are they archival or whatnot? I understand that it is more about the watercolors in this set, but you know, it would have been nice to know what we're getting. I didn't want to spend too much time on this piece and decorated more. It was mainly to see if um, how everything works and how it will turn out. So I did not decorate this much further than this. Maybe I will go back in later and finish it, but probably not. I'm pleased to say that this paper and the watercolors are very nice to doodle on on top so even my white pen was not struggling at all i did another piece that i will show at the end of this um, and it did not uh, struggle as much as it would on other papers
and that is the finished piece. Very happy with it. And then I just wanted to try out something else. I wanted to uh, use a few more vibrant colors in, in one piece and I decided to uh, make some bubbles and what I did was I pressed watercolors, the watercolors onto the paper with just using a round shape. By the time I was done applying all the different colors, some of them had already dried and um, so I had to go back in manually and add a little bit more. But look how pretty these look. I kind of want to make more of these bubbles. I'll make a, a bigger piece with different sized um, bubbles and I think that would look really neat. Because it was work, I had to work on such a small surface, they kind of started running into each other and muddy up, but I just dabbed it a little bit and uh, reapplied some more color later. I also forgot to use the brush that came with the set, but I think I'm just so used to grabbing my my brushes and because the handle of that brush was quite short I just it does it didn't feel good in my hands and so I just gra gravitated towards the ones that I have. I also did not use the pencil that came in the set and I uh, don't use the sponge that comes with the set either because I have my own rags. I kind of wish again that they had provided us with a little bit more information as uh, what the as, as what the bristles are of the brush, um, that information is missing. But again, it is an add-on to the set and is not really the main focus of, of this set. But yeah, those colors are super vibrant. Um, they are considered student grade, whatever that means. Um, so I really enjoyed working with them. I consider myself a student, so they work for me. I wanted to work a little bit more with the pen that was provided, and so I decided to add a few more circles onto my piece and doodle in them a little bit. I have to say I'm a little bit rusty with those doodles, so don't judge me. But again, I just wanted to to use all the the supplies that were provided to me uh, to give a comprehensive review. Again, that nib just felt a little bit too big for me. There's a lot of ink that comes out of it and I, maybe I'm just not used to it. For somebody who likes to work on bigger pieces and um, probably could use a bigger pen, it's, it would work probably just fine. I appreciate that everything is so compact and basically everything you need is in this metal tin and you can take it out on the field with you or you can take it on vacation and it won't take up too much space. And the nice thing is I was able to get the colors out. They were glued down um, with hot glue, but I was able to get them out of the tin and so you could potentially use the bottom half as a uh, mixing space as well. The tins themselves do not come out and they are not replaceable, so um, yeah. Hopefully they will change that in the future so you can buy them individually. But as of now, if once they're gone, they're gone. Okay, this is it. I hope you found this review helpful. I tried to be as thorough and transparent as possible. 
Thanks again to Paul Rubens Art for gifting me this set. It is available on Amazon right now for 36 US dollars and I have links for it down below for you. These are not affiliate links so I am not making any extra money off of them but I think they would make a nice gift for either yourself or a loved one especially with the upcoming holidays. Um, I am certainly going to keep using them, um, especially uh, if I am looking for vibrant and bright colors. So thanks again so much for watching and I will be back with uh, regularly scheduled videos next week. Thanks again. Bye.